Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about how to take care of brand new brushes, brushes that you're currently using, and maybe ones that you've neglected a bit. Now I have a previous video that talks about Brush Care 101 and some of those things, and if you want to review that, that's great. There'll be a link for that at the end of the video. But this is more for if you get a brand new set of brushes and you're not sure what you're supposed to do with that. And realistically, I didn't know about this until not too long ago, and I was probably damaging brushes before I'd even put a first drop of paint on there. So uh, what with that be being said, I'm going to explain some of the tools you have available to you that you either should have or might want to consider purchasing in order to make your brushes last longer and how to keep them performing their best. So as you can see, I've got a few selections of brush soaps. Uh, a lot of people talk about the Masters. You can get this on Amazon. Um, this is a different kind of brush soap I got with a brush set. It's literally like a, a bar of soap that you would get, you know, for your you know, bathroom or whatever, but it's it's meant for brushes. It's an artist style, but it's a hard soap. And then this is uh, my new favorite, Gentastic's Drunken Brush Goop, which is available at slowsfusegaming.com. I don't get any affiliation sort of kickbacks or anything like that. I just like their stuff. So uh, this is my favorite by far now, and I'll talk about why in a little bit. So uh, the other things that you might want to consider having are, these are cuticle clippers, but essentially they're flat or flush cut clippers. They're very sharp. They do a really good job of cutting bristles when they go astray. But if you have really good plastic cutters, flush cut cutters, or things like that, that's would, I would recommend having something along that line. It's really going to be helpful in getting rid of those uh, flyaway and damaged bristles. And then I've just got some basic things that you should have around if you're going to paint or clean your brushes. I've got a paper towel here, and I've got a mug full of uh, clean water. All right, so let's talk about the brushes that we're going to mess around with. So this is a brand new brush, it's a uh, Kalinsky Sable natural hair brush. So I'm going to talk about what to do with a brand new brush. This is one that I've actually damaged, but you may get a new brush that looks like this where I tried to mess with the contrast on the video so that you'll be able to see those small bristles. But you can see basically I put the cap back on, on the, the protective cover, and I damaged my own brush. But sometimes you'll get a new brush that will have this type of situation. I'll show you how to take care of that. And then this brush here is one I probably haven't used in about six months. I don't remember if I cleaned it properly. I don't think I used this uh, new soap on it. So I'm going to clean it uh, for the first time uh, in a while, and we'll see what happens on video, and you guys can make judgments for yourself. But it's, uh, it's at least formed to a point, so I know it's still good, but there's probably paint rested in the, in the near the ferrule that I didn't get the first time. So you get your brand new brush, take it out of the package, take the little cover off, and you want to assume that every br new brush you buy has starch on the bristles. It's called a shaping starch. What it does is keeps a point while the brushes are being transported and so on. So to, to prevent damaging that, uh, or the bristles, the natural hair bristles, which is just, it's real, it's hair, is if you were to go and try to put paint on this and start painting, you could potentially cause some of these to break or to get damaged. And then you can basically have a brand new brush that was ruined because you didn't clean or prepare it properly. So I'm gonna push it into some water here. I'm not pushing the tip down into the bottom. Uh, that kind of goes without saying, but just be careful when you have any brush to not push all the way down to the bottom of whatever dish you have. It's okay to kind of run it up against the sides here and kind of get it loose. I'm letting that starch loosen up. I'm rotating the brush a little bit, kind of up against the edge. I'm not trying to mash it into the edge or anything like that, but uh, I am just kind of letting it roll. Very, you know, being very ginger and gentle with the brush. Once it's damp, I'll bring in my paper towel here and it's going to kind of wash out because of the contrast I've got here but I'm going to dry it out and kind of shape it. I'm going to rotate it about 90 degrees or so just to kind of see what it does. If it starts to flay or you know the brushes splay out I should say uh, or things look you know out of place that's where we'd come in with those clippers here and and take care of it. So now I've taken the starch and I've, I've activated it essentially to get it loosened up so it's not stiff so now I can actually clean the brush. You think, oh, I gotta clean a brand new brush? Yeah, you, you should clean a brand new brush. Even if it's a synthetic, they put starch on some synthetics. You should just always assume that there's some sort of uh, shaping starch on that bristle, on those brushes, because what's the what's the point of assuming it doesn't have it on there and then you find out it's damaged? So I put a little water back on my brush, just uh, off screen there, and I'm just gonna get a little bit of uh, of the soap on there, and I'm just gonna kind of move a little bit. This is this. Uh, brush goop here is pretty soft at room temperature and you can see it building up on the on the ferrule right there at the base that's all you don't need a whole lot that's all you need if you're using the masters i'll talk about this real quick this comes hard it's a hard um almost like a, a block i add water to this periodically so that it's a soft 
material so that I don't end up mashing the bristles. So just keep that in mind that if you do use the masters or you already have it, that's fine. Add water into it periodically and just I just stir it up with the end of a brush just like this to keep it keep it kind of like a smooth, smooth paste. So now I've got this this on my bristles here. I'm just gonna use my hand. This is nice because then you don't run it across a paper towel and you don't damage any of the bristles with a rough surface and you can take your hand and kind of make a natural crease out of it. Try to get a good angle here on the camera. Uh, I normally use this here. So I'm just gonna agitate and get, I'm pulling away at the same time as also rotating the brush to get that soap into those long bristles. You do this until you get a good lather going, you get it nice and nice and clean. And I say nice and clean, but nice, you know, a nice good coverage of soap. And then I'm gonna rinse it and do the same thing again in the water up against the, the edge of the cup gently. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the paper towel where I'm turning it. I'm not ro I'm not rotating it and rolling it as I pull. You don't wanna you don't wanna do that because that'll that'll twist the bristles and you you'd want to get away from ever doing that um, intentionally especially when you're cleaning, because if you clean your brush after every time you paint, you're, you're gonna be basically putting the, the bristles into a, a spot where they may have a memory and then they'll twist and then you'll lose the, the fine point. So now, now that I've done that, I'm gonna look at this brush and I'm gonna see if there's any spliced hairs or anything like that kind of coming away. And again, I would go and trim those away. And this one doesn't have any. Um, so now I'm gonna kind of treat it like I was painting with it because I've, I've gotten rid of the starch. It's off of there and now I'm gonna Pretend that this is gonna this is gonna simulate me using it and painting several colors, painting for a little while, and you know cleaning it off with just water, things like that. And then I'm gonna look at it again. And you can see nothing's really flying away, nothing's splayed out. It looks pretty good. So this is actually this is really nice when you get a brush like this. It won't always be that nice. So I'm gonna go back in the water. And now, if you want to put a brush away for storage, you can take this soap and you can take a little bit. It's a conditioner as well, which is why I like it. So it's a restorer, a conditioner, and it's a soap. It does everything. I'm gonna get a little bit on there. I'm gonna do the same thing I did on my hand, just to get it all nice and, and coated. And then I'm gonna dry it off. And again, I'm just gonna do 90 degree turns, edge to you know, edge on, edge on. I'm not gonna twist because I don't want it to dry with a uh, a twist to it. So now I can. Just take a look at the bristles, make sure they're shaped properly. If I have the cover, I can put that back on and store it either horizontally to dry because you don't want water, you don't want to store it vertical with the water coming back down into the ferrule. That'll uh, seep into the glues and break down and cause problems later. Uh, or some people have ways to keep it uh, inverted. That's great. So, it, but at the very least horizontal and put a cover back on it. If you have one, be careful putting it back on. Which leads me to the next one here, which is this guy. So I put this cover back on and caught the bristles and now I'm in, this, I'm in the boat of like, okay, well, if I want to paint with this, you know, I've got this guy that's not going to help out. This guy over here is going to be dragging paint all over where I don't want it to go. So these, these flush cut clippers, which this is a cuticle clipper, I'm just going to come up to it, isolate the hair, bring it back as far as I can, and try to, to clip it past the ferrule towards, towards the ferrule this way. Because if you, if you go this way outwards and you accidentally pull, it's going to pull on some of the bristles in here. It could actually cause more damage to other bristles and then you're creating more more damage than you uh, are, are fixing. I'm going to isolate this one here. Bring it back. Look around. There might be a couple others that, that kind of got drugged. Try to just be very careful about... Um, you know, you, you don't want to cut too much, obviously, but if there's a if there's a bristle that's only halfway, half length, it was that's probably one that's broken while you were painting, maybe edge on or edge highlighting or something like that, and it's um, it's it's broken because hair can break if there's a couple that are short, and all that's going to do is is pull others away as well. So, all right, so now I'll do the same thing, get it some water, and then I would do the the cleaning process again, and I would make sure that it's holding together. So I'm just this, I'm not trying to smash it into my hand, but I'm just giving a good, you know, if I was base coating something or something along that line, just a you know, natural, natural stroke. And I'm rotating the brush to, to get a nice even dispersion so that the bristles get a chance to kind of go out. And again, now what you're looking for is anything that's sticking out. And this is a much, this is a larger brush. This is a number one, but it's a larger uh, series. So 
um, you know, there's another one here, but you get the idea that uh, periodically as you're painting, say you've, you've you know, done a few paint sessions and your new brush, it's gonna have one or two little bristles at the end that either, or while you're painting, you'll notice it start to splay out. Take the stop, clean your brush out, do what I just did and check it. And if you got the little wayward hairs, or you got something that's pulling away from the rest of the, of the bunch, trim it back. And then you've gotten, you've gotten that brush back to having a nice point and being able to be controlled really well. Lastly, I'm gonna take this used up, I say used up brush, but um, you can see there's probably some, some paint, some stuff still staining on here. We'll see how much of that we can get taken care of. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna go get the brush wet. I'm gonna agitate it on the side of the mug off camera there. And now I'm going to get some brush soap. And this may take a couple, uh, a couple iterations, but I'll just show you what I would do a few times over until I was happy. So I'm gonna, again, find the crease in my, you know, in my hand, which is great because I can control the angle. I'm not bending the bristles any more than about, I'll try to show you here, about that far, about 30 degrees or so. You don't wanna try to mash it in. That's not good for the bristles, obviously. But what this does is works it into the bristles. And now that, since I'm trying to clean it, what I wanna do is try to get that soap up into the base where the ferrule meets the bristles. So that's this crease in my hand, I'm gonna hold that bend and I'm gonna mar march it forward pushing it forward. Now, some bristles are gonna be softer than others and they're gonna to start to, to flay out. If they do, try less of an angle and less pressure. Uh, and then after that, a little more water and a little more soap, because it just, you know, this, this also kind of acts as a, a lubrication in between your hands there to keep the bristles pointed in the same direction. So if it's, if they're all catching and getting splayed out, you're actually not helping the brushing. So I've had a few brushes where they just didn't really want to cooperate as much. So if you can't push them forward to get more soap into the base, you know, do what you can with what you got. But, uh, you know, just be keep in mind that if they start splaying all over the place, that that's not going to help your situation. But you can do this, you know, for a little while. This isn't going to hurt anything. I'm, I'm rotating the brushes. I do this, you know, in gradual increments as I go forward. I'm not really trying to twist in this motion. I'm, I'm going and then turning and then going and then turning and then going and then turning. So that just keep that in mind. Again, you're not trying to, to twist these bristles any more than you, you have to. All right, so I've cleaned that off. You know, I can wipe this off my hand and see if there's, again, the contrast, like I said, on this white's not gonna show very well, but there's a little bit of discoloration. I might've been using a tan or something along that line. It does kind of look similar to this color of the brush soap, but again, it, it, if there was blue or something like that, you know, you'd be able to see it, but I'm gonna rinse the brush and then I'm going to drag it on my paper towel here, turning about 90 degrees to just kind of pull the, the water and any excess paint that might be in the, on the base there. And then I'm gonna evaluate the brush again and, and look and see. So and there's a couple of wayward bristles on this. This one could use a little bit of attention. Uh, if, if I was really concerned about this being a, a dirty brush or if I knew there was blue paint down at the base of the ferrule or you know some, whatever, you know, blue, black, green, doesn't matter, uh, I would just clean it again a few more times and you'll get little bits of paint that'll start to work themselves loose. So uh, again, I like this drunken brush goop from uh, slowfusegaming.com because it is a conditioner. You can leave it on the brush for, uh, you can store your brushes with it on there and then you just treat it like you would if it was a brand new brush and had, had the shaping starch on it. You get it wet and you do the same process. That will keep your brushes uh, holding a point when you're not using them. It'll help protect them if you, if you, you know, bump them or whatever. It'll keep them from you know, kind of going out and you're not being able to catch the, the fact that they were split and then they're sitting there and, and, and whatnot. Um, and again, it's, it acts as a conditioner for the natural hair so it doesn't dry out as much. It'll give them a longer life, a longer useful life with the, the material that's in the, the drunken brush goop. That's not to say that other soaps and things aren't good. There are other brush conditioners out there. I'm just letting you know what I've come to, to like the most and find is, a, is most a good fit for me. So I hope you found that useful and informative. If you like our page, please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook. Give us any uh, tips or questions in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.